Aloha and welcome to the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. I am your host, Gwendolyn Harris. I am so happy to have my guest today here in the studio with me today. He is a saxophonist who is also an accomplished composer and educator based in the Pacific Northwest. He has lived and performed in over 50 countries known as a smooth jazz artist. His seasoned musical style incorporates Latin, classical, new age, rhythm and blues, funk and gospel influence. My guest has played with jazz greats Kenny Burrell, Jimmy, Jimmy Heath, Phil Woods, David Sanborn, and Wynton Marcellus, just to name a few. Please welcome Mr. Kenny Paulson to the show. Welcome so much to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Now, I know you flew all these miles, and you just flew in a few hours ago. Yes, and right. And you're here doing the interview. I'm here. So I thank you. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, we're going to get started. You're here in Hawaii because you're going to be playing at some, you're basically, you're playing at the medical conference yes. here. Mm -hmm. That's, your, that's your, main, your main gig. But then you're also going to be playing around Hawaii, Hawaii, and we're going to talk about that later. We'll get to that later. Okay. But what I want to know is you come from a musical background. Your yes. mom, dad, your grandfather, Mr. Chubby Wayne Harshaw, he played with Count Basie and Cab Calloway. So what was it like in that musical family? Oh, it was great. I mean, you know, music was everywhere. And what made it so interesting, especially because of my grandfather, being around all the different heavyweights and stuff, mm -hmm. and they would just come by the house like nothing to it, you know? You'd be having jam sessions, huh? Oh, yeah. Jam wow. sessions, everybody hanging out. I mean, it was a lot of fun. Nice. Lot of fun. Now, what made you choose the saxophone as your instrument of choice? Well, I, joined, I started music um, for the wrong reasons. You know, there was a lady involved, you know. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> just like many other people. But uh, I just, uh, after getting into it, I, I fell in love with it. And uh, the rest is what you see, what you get. Is it, it's just a saxophone. Yeah, that's just, right. just, just the saxophone. Yeah. So you tell, just tell us, um, you said your grandfather would have the jam sessions, but you started at a young age in I, those jams. Yeah, I would hang out and, you know, I'd love to see the guys do what they do, you know, and it was also interesting because after knowing the people, you know, you kind of know the personality mm -hmm. and to see their personality come out of their instruments is a whole different, whole different thing than whole just, different thing. just hearing them play, you know, it's a whole different thing. Now, you have lived in 50 countries and traveled extensively and you've been, and I'm just going to name a few. Okay. Brazil, Chile, China, Colombia. Mm -hmm. What was it like to teach music abroad? I know music is like a universal language. Right. But to teach in all these, those are just to name a few of the countries, but to teach abroad, what was it like? Oh, it was very interesting because, you know, when you hear people say music is an uh, international and universal language, it, it really is true. Mm -hmm. It really is true. And it's just, just everybody slings their things a little different than someone else, you know, which makes it more interesting, you know. And it was, it was a good experience, a very, very good experience. Now, what would you say might be some of the differences as music, from the music abroad to the music here in the United States? What would you say, if oh, there are any? Some of it's different in, in ways that even the literature, the way they write it, for mm -hmm. example. Uh, music in South America, a lot of people don't know, even a lot of musicians don't know, that it's, it's written in 2-4 and not 4-4, four four, like most um, musicians have it here. They'll, mm -hmm. they'll write 4-4 four four or mm -hmm. they'll write cut time, what we call cut time, which means twice as fast, you know. Uh, but down there, they actually write it in two beats to a minute. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Now, I want to, I, I've read your bio. I had to do some research. You know, when I, when I have guests on the show, I always have to research them and, okay. you know, dig a little deep into their bio. Mm -hmm. So I was reading in your bio where you, ex, you did experience, like, like we all do still today, experience, experience some racism, oh, okay, yeah. coming along. But you received your master's in jazz composition and arranging from Howard University. 
And like I said, I feel sorry for you because I went to Hampton University. Oh. But, it's still, <laughs> but, but it's still an HBCU, and I love my HBCUs. Okay. But um, you received your master's from Howard University, which is an HBCU. And for those of you that, that do not know, that means historically black college and university. Mm -hmm. So you traveled all around the world, and you received your undergrad at at, at another college. Right. So by going to a predominantly black college, an HBCU, what was it like attending that after all your travels and some of the racism that you, that you had experienced? Oh, it was, I felt like I'd come home. <laughs> <laughs> I was very welcome. Uh, I enjoyed the black experience. I mean, even our books were written by black authors. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so uh, I learned a lot about myself being at Howard University. So it was great. I got a chance to uh, uh, network with my brothers, my uh, fraternity brothers, which mm -hmm. made it really nice, you know, Phi Beta Sigma. I don't mind saying that. Mm -hmm. you know, Go ahead and say it. Go ahead and say it. I'm proud of it. I'm very proud of it. Go ahead and say it. Very proud of it. So, yeah, it was a, a wonderful experience, so, you know, completely different from uh, when I did my undergrad. Mm -hmm. Very and, welcoming. And I know exactly what you're saying, because like I said, I went to Hampton okay. um, and, and going to predominantly white schools growing up, you know, going to Hampton, I was like, you know, you find, you find who, you, who you truly are right. um, by going to that, going to a college like that. Mm -hmm. Now, your latest album, because the title of the show is called Kenny Polson for Lovers Only, your latest album for Lovers Only, this is your second album, which was just released. Correct. How did this album come about? Well, I like to think of each album as a project. And each project has a theme. And so you work within that particular theme. And for Lovers Only, for those of who have had a chance to listen to it or, or even just look at the, the title tracks, you'll see that there's a lot of love songs on there mm -hmm. and songs that are directed toward that direction, you know, pointed toward that direction. Well, I so, love it. So for those of you that have not heard it yet, this is it. You should, you should get a copy of it. And I'm pretty sure he'll be um, having, having them for sale where he plays. But I do know that on the album, you have some of the, the remakes, I want to say, of Love on a Two-Way Street. I think that's a Stacey Ladder song. Yeah. <laughs> Stacey Ladder song, yeah. song. And La 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 means I love you. Yes. Yeah, I that love those songs. By, um, was Stacey Ladder song also, well, she did it after uh, The Moments. Mm -hmm. The Moments mm -hmm. did it first, and then Stacey Ladder song. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, La La Means I Love You was, I don't remember who did that one, um, Tom Bell wrote it, and uh, um, it'll come to me, but it was, anyway, it was one, <laughs> one of my favorite tunes, so I had to do that one, you know what I mean? Yes, it was, it's, it, I love it, I know my favorite song on there is Innocence, okay. and I know my link sister, who is here in the studio with us today, Miss Linda, her favorite song on there is Blessed, because I've played it on my radio show yes. a couple times, just for her, as a matter of fact. Cool. Now, what's your favorite song on the album? You know, it's a toss-up, because all of them are, are my babies, <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. And that's just like asking a mother, what's your favorite child? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I really enjoy all of them, but I do like uh, I do like Blessed. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, to be honest with you, I was surprised when our radio promoter decided that would be the, the first single off of. It. Really? Yeah, because that's the only one on this album that I'm playing tenor sax. Oh. And all the others I'm playing alto and soprano. Nice. Yeah. Now I do want to mention on this album. You actually play with some heavy hitters, and I'm going to, mm -hmm. I'm going to mention them here because okay. um, I had to write them down. It took me a while to write them down off okay. of the album. So you have Bruce Conte and Roger Smith, guitar and keys. They're from Tower of Power. Yes. Then you have Larry Gittins, the trumpeter, from Cool in the Gang. Yeah. Then you have Phil Upchurch, the guitar guitarist from Donnie Hathaway and George Benson. Mm -hmm. 
Tom Grant, who's just, you know, everybody knows him. That smooth, smooth jazz, jazz that That's smooth right. jazz, that smooth jazz pianist. Fred Wesley, trombone, Parliament, and Funkadelic. Mm -hmm. And then Michael Henderson, bassist and vocalist from um, Stevie Wonder and Miles Davis. Right. Now, how did you get those heavy hitters like that? Those are some well, heavy hitters. They are oh, heavy one hitters. album. Yep. Well, the whole concept, I wanted to do smooth jazz with a blend of R&B. Mm -hmm. And it has been done before, so it's not the first time that it that has been done. But I wanted to try to sound as original as possible and as close to R&B when I needed that, that for it to slant that way or as close to uh, smooth jazz if I wanted to slant that way. So I decided I was going to call in my favors for, for all my friends and just to see <laughs> See what I come up with, and it's, you listen to it. It has an it's a real nice blend of R and B yes. and smooth yes, jazz. Yes, it is, and, and I'm know. telling you, those are some heavy. Those are some very, very heavy hitters. That, mm -hmm. That's that's all I can say on that. You need to get the album. You need to get it. Now, you've already collaborated with all these people. Mm -hmm. Who would you like to collaborate with? Somebody that you haven't. Who would you like to? Oh, that's very good. I, okay, we're shooting for the moon now. Yeah, we are. I just, I just want to know who, 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 who. I would love to collaborate with Stevie Wonder. You want to know why I laugh you say that? Why? Because a lot of my artists that come in here, that's the first name that comes out their mouth is Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder, that's, he's the cat. He's the cat. And I would love to uh, also collaborate with, you know, believe it or not, some classical people. Yo-Yo mm -hmm. Ma would be fun to collaborate with because my my musical palette is all over the place. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, right now I'm working on uh, a project uh, that's going to be Latin, mm. more of a Brazilian slide of things because I, I lived in South America for seven years. Wow. Particularly Rio de Janeiro for five years. And so I, I fell in love with that music also. So on the Latin side of the house, who would you want to work with? Gilberto Gil would be a lot of fun to work with. Uh, De Javon would be one uh, to work with. I, I could, I could name. I, you know, I was just thinking. Um, Joao Gilberto would have been great to to work with also, but we just lost him. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when I was living down there, I, I didn't live very far from. Antonio Carlos Jobim, he would have mm. been fun to work with. But we called him Tom, Tom Jobim. And uh, he was a nice guy and, and very, very friendly, and uh, he hung out a lot, too. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people don't know that, but I it was can, really cool. I, I can imagine. Now, they're taking, and I, I ask this of, of all the artists, because me growing up, I played music. I played music all the way up to college. Okay. Started out in the school system. And as you know, now they're taking the art and music out of the school. So what is your thought on that? What is your thought on that? Well, my biggest concern about them cutting music is the sensitivity that comes with music. When you take that out, you take that away from the students, so they don't get a chance to grow with that. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, they also take away the possibility of uh, creativity. Right. And regardless of the other subject, music encompasses all the subjects. It takes a little from every every single subject, and it's all synthesized into one. I'm gonna have you hold that thought. Okay. We have to go on a quick break. We'll be right back. Aloha, I'm Stan Osterman, Stan the Energy Man, every Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. If you're really interested in finding out what's going on in energy, especially here in Hawaii, but also all the way around the world, and especially if it has to do with hydrogen, look into Stan the Energy Man every Friday, 12 o'clock, Think Tech Hawaii. Be there. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Keisha King, host of At the Crossroads, where we have conversations that are real 
and relevant. We have spoken with community leaders from right here locally in Hawaii and all around the world. Won't you join us on thinktechhawaii.com or on YouTube on the Think Tech Hawaii channel. Our conversations are real, relevant, and lots of fun. I'll see you at the crossroads. Aloha. Aloha and welcome back to the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. I am your host, Gwendolyn Harris, and in the studio with me today, I have visiting saxophonist, Mr. Kenny Olson. We have been talking about his career, his new CD that's out, and the question that I just asked him before we went to break was, how did he feel about having the music and the arts taken out of the schools? And he answered that question. But the next question that I'm going to ask you is, what can we do about it? Well, parents can advocate for that. Uh, I will tell you this from being also an ex-administrator, is mm -hmm. that administrators do not like to deal with parents, mm -hmm. especially when parents are upset. <laughs> mm -hmm. And when you really look at the thing and think about it, uh, as far as education is concerned, students are the clients of education. Mm -hmm. If you look at, because it's really, uh, if you look at it like a, in a business sense, okay, students are the clients. And the advocates for students are the parents because a lot of times students don't know how to articulate what they need or what they want. Mm -hmm. Some of them just aren't able to because of their age and some of them just aren't able to because they just don't know how to express it, but parents know how to do that. Mm -hmm. So if the parents decide to come up in arms because of all the taxes that they, that they pay and everything that's involved, because see, like, uh, the schools get their funding from the state. Mm -hmm. The education follows the child. If the parents decide that they want to come up, you know, up in arms about music education in the, in the public system, it can happen. They have more power than they realize that they have. Well, I, I, there's, I really want to, um, I'm working personally on trying to find a way to keep the music in the schools here mm -hmm. um, because I just think that um, kids need that. Mm -hmm. they, they, they really do need that. So what would you tell? There's a lot of musicians that are out there today. So. Some make it and some do not make it. Some just decide to give it up. You know, mm -hmm. they can't do it. But what would you tell an up-and-coming musician that's coming up into the, in the music career today? They're coming up in music for a career. I tell them not to give up. No matter what goes down, keep doing what you do. And don't be afraid to ask for help. Sometimes that help comes in a financial way. Sometimes that help comes in an advisory way, but don't be afraid to ask for that help. Most musicians know what they need, or they at least have an idea of what they need. Mm -hmm. But everybody, everybody is not, you know, the type of people that would advocate for themselves in a proper way. So as long as they don't give up, as long as they don't uh, be too shy to ask for help, no matter who that somebody is, mm -hmm. even if they meet somebody famous, they ask the question, you know, how do you get certain things, you know, how do you, how do you make this work, you know, because music really is a business. Yes. Yes, it is. Now, what's coming up next for you in your career? What, what projects do you have going on? Besides what I'm doing here mm -hmm. in Hawaii? Mm-hmm. I'm actually working, I, I sort of mentioned it, I'm working on a Latin CD, mm -hmm. and it, it's more of a Brazilian slant on things. And what I have done is written arrangements on Brazilian selection. And I've gotten some of my friends who, heavyweight musicians. Heavyweight musicians. Heavyweight musicians, <laughs> just like I did on this project. Mm -hmm. A lot of people here in the States don't know who these people are, but the people in Brazil and in other parts of the country, you know who they are. And they're really, really heavyweights. Okay. And so I'm excited about it. I really, really am. 
What's the time frame we're looking at um, for it to come out? Well, if it works out the way I'm hoping that it'll work <laughs> out, we'll, we could be talking about this next year. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So it's something where I need to start getting my little dancing shoes on for, right? That's right. Get oh. ready. <laughs> Okay. You're ready because it has a nice feel. It's a happy feel. Well, you know? you're going to be playing something. You're going to be playing a little something for us. Um, but meanwhile, while you go ahead and, and get ready, I want to tell the people here in Hawaii, Mr. Kenny Paulson, he is going to be around Hawaii. Uh, he's going to be playing on July 25th at Jazz Minds from 7 to 10 p.m. Then he'll be at Medici's on July 26th from 7, 7 to 10 p.m. Then he will be on the Kona side. He will be going to Kona and playing at Gertrude's Jazz Bar, which sounds like that's going to be a fun gig for you. Mm -hmm. And he'll be there from 7 to 10. And then on the 29th, as I said, he is here for playing for the medical conference. And it's the Jazz and Scholarship Luncheon at the Hilton Hawaiian. And that's from 12 to 3.30 p.m. If you want to know more about, about this, you can go to your website is... KennyPaulson.com. You can go to KennyPaulson.com or you can go to... Go ahead. You have to make sure you spell it right. Okay, you have to make sure you spell his name right. Please spell that's his name right. K-E-N-N-E-Y-P-O-L-S-O-N. If you leave that E out, you'll get a longshoreman on the East Coast. <laughs> so it won't so, be me. <laughs> so you heard that, everyone. His name is spelled K-E-N-N-E-Y. E-Y, -E -Y, okay? P-O-L-S-O-N dot com. Also, you can go there, and then you can also go to my Hawaii Smooth Jazz Lovers group because I'm always posting um, events that are happening around in the area. But... Mr. Kenny Paulson is going to play a little something for us right now. This is for all the birthday people. That means everybody, doesn't it? Okay. Yes, that's everybody. Everybody has a birthday. That's everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's birthday is in the house. Well, thank you so much, Kenny, for being here. I know that people are going to look forward to seeing you mm -hmm. around the island because I know I'll probably be here. I'll probably be at all the events. Um, but thank you again for being here again. You just came off of a flight and came straight here Pretty to much. the studio. So, again, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I give a shout out? You can give all the shout outs and shout outs you want to. Go ahead. Give me a I shout out. I want to give a shout out to everybody who I'm going to meet mm -hmm. at either of the performances. And I want to make sure that I get a chance to meet, especially all the brothers in blue. Five Beta Sigma brothers, you guys come out. I'm, I'm challenging you right now. <laughs> so you heard that. All of your Five Beta Sigma fraternity and brothers incorporated. That's right. Your frat brother is, is yeah. here on island, so you need to come see him. And also, the Zetas. And the Zetas, too. And the, the Zeta Phi Beta sorority. You yep. guys need to come on out and support him, yes. okay? All the Divine Nine. That's it. All the Divine, Divine Nine. Because Miss Linda's AK over there. She's looking That's at me right. like, what about me? Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> for those of you, this is Kenny's CD. Get it. Where can they get it? KennyPolson.com. KennyPolson.com. Or any other performances this week. We also got T-shirts. Okay. You heard that. CDs and T-shirts. Come on out mm -hmm. and get them. I thank everyone. I thank you. Kenny, for being here. Thanks for the invitation, and thanks for having me. Thank you, and I thank everyone for tuning in here to the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection with me today, your host, Gwendolyn Harris. Until next time, aloha, and God bless.